Next I'm going to go through the process of setting this timing gear properly but to do that I have to remove this boot and unfortunately this engine is so old that I really should have bought new new boots because they're pretty dry rotted and when I try to pull this one off it actually splits so this thing is not in the best shape I got the boot to come off but it was took some work and of course like I said it's pretty much destroyed now especially now that I just broke it completely this thing can operate fine without these things it actually might give it a little bit of character to do that but I do need to get see if I can find any replacement ones and get them on order so anyway to set the timing on this like I said one of the Sato uh, there's a book guide to Sato engine four stroke disassembly repair or whatever they show the dimensions for a tool that you can use that you insert into the uh, the push rod hole and engage in this hole here but I found that I've got this screwdriver that fits right in there nicely now the only kicker is you have to get the cam follower out and I'm hoping that I might be able to coax that cam follower up here close enough and be able to pull it out with a magnet but it doesn't look like I'm going to be that lucky so basically what that means is I'm going to have to take this whole timing gear out not a big deal there's this little set screw here that holds it in place just loosen that thing up and then just push this pin right out should come out pretty easily because I've had this engine apart recently now I got this silly magnet over here grabbing everything so I just kind of gave it a little shove pull the pin out now there's usually a little Teflon gasket or guide on either side of this to act as a bearing surface uh, when I pull this out we'll see if I still have those in this engine or not I don't know there's the one on this side the other one's right in there I'm not going to mess with it because they're quite honestly a real pain but as you can see now I can see those cam followers I'm just going to push this one right up and out since that's the one I'll be using I'll just take that out right now then I'm going to reinstall this gear as you can see here the lobes it's got quite a bit of wear on it you know ideally I could replace that too but I don't really have it on hand so I'm not going to there's our timing dot. I'm going to put this thing back in place and hopefully keep those little bearing pieces in place. Now this pin that came out has got a cutout which is where it, this retaining set screw engages so when I shove this thing back through here I need to make sure I know which the orientation is of that pin Alright, so I took a slightly different approach at this thing. If it doesn't work one way, try it another. This time what I did was I inserted the pin going this way and it was much easier to get that pin in there. Now I can see my flat and since I don't have this big section here to deal with I should be able to more easily guide this piece down into place. I've got the uh, timing case and the timing gear here. This engine was so old that the rubber boots around here were dry rotted and in, in disassembly I ended up tearing one and, and uh, it, it's destroyed so I'm going to have to replace those. But in the meantime I decided I'd just go ahead and take the other one off and we're going to go old school with this engine. We're going to have exposed rocker arms and uh, the open piston or the open push rods too because without these boots the pushrod tubes won't won't uh, align up and stay in place so we're going to go old school with this uh, one thing I need to do before I can actually reset the timing on the engine is uh, luckily this now that that boots out this magnet pulls this follower out real easily so as I had shown you before you pull out the intake side cam follower because this hole lines up with it and that's what you actually use to do the timing and I just so happen to have a screwdriver 
that that tip of that screwdriver fits right in there and if I rotate you see the hole if I rotate this around you'll see now here is the actual timing dot and that'll be at the six o'clock position when this screwdriver or any kind of tool you've got is installed in there and hold that in position so I'm basically going to put this in there and I'll show you how when I rotate it it just kind of dropped right into place and it's in that hole and you can see now this timing gear won't move so now what I'm going to do is bring my crankcase over here I've already kind of lubed up the area where the gasket is so it shouldn't move around much um, but when you time these things and you've got your tool set there and your timing gear set you want to make sure that your piston or your crankshaft uh, pin is at top dead center so while I'm dropping this in place I'm going to make sure I hold this right at top dead center so the timing should just go like this So right now this thing should be properly timed I should just have to drop screw in here I'll run one down here real quick and another so now the timing case cover is in place and it can't move so right now our engine's timed and you can see here I'll pull this out we'll rotate this around round and round it goes where it stops nobody knows so now I'm just going to slide this thing back in here and check this timing. I'm going to rotate until I see that drop into the hole. And it just dropped into the hole and I'm right at top dead center. Now if I'd have had that time, if I hadn't used this tool and just tried to guess and just put it on there, it could have very easily been off a tooth one way or the other. That's why using this tool is the best and the perfect way to actually set the timing and it's also a lot easier to do it <laughs> if the uh, if the cylinder head isn't on either because it's a lot easier to manipulate it's a lot harder to play with this thing here when you got the head in the way and the rocker arm uh, this part here in the way so it's a heck of a lot easier to do it like that so right now that thing is set right so we're done there now it's just a matter of putting these other two screws in running them down so that's done now I can just reinstall my follower when you install the follower you obviously want to make sure that the flat portion goes down and the part that's cupped out is the part that the push rod engages in so you want that to be up so now those are installed now we can move on to putting our cylinder head back on now I like to have this thing so that it's pretty much all the way out and my pistons at top dead center I've got my alignment hole or my the mark here that denotes the front of the uh, connecting rod and it also has that beveled edge and I've already kind of pre-lubricated this so now this is just a matter of simply sliding it over there and then just kind of rotating the crankshaft until it seats now in a diagonal pattern I'll start just running these screws down I'm not tightening them I'm just at this time I'm just kind of running them down So they're all run down now. I'm going to torque them. And again in a diagonal pattern. And I'll hit them go around one more time and kind of feel the torque. Make sure they don't turn anymore. Okay, they're good. So now you're like, well, how are you going to get the push rods in? Well, I'm going to grab a screwdriver. 
flathead. And I'm going to take the rocker arms off. And using my handy dandy magnet, pull that retaining pin out, pull the rocker arm off. Now these push rods are the same. Each one of them is the same, but they're same but different. One end is not tapered, one end is tapered. But other than that, I mean, there's no left and right. They're identical as far as that goes. So you just want to make sure that the tapered end goes into, it fits into the seat of the rock arm. So the non-tapered end, I'm going to just kind of guide through this little hole here. And when I put my rock arm on, I want to be mindful of making sure that that gets engaged. And then I'll put my retaining pin back in here and I'll be able to tighten this thing up now I plan on since I'm kind of going old school with this I'm planning on running it without the valve covers on too so it'll look kind of cool so I just got to make sure I get that pin tight enough so that during the course of the uh, operation it doesn't come working out because one of the uh, purposes or one of the things that the valve covers do is that they do ensure that these pins can't come out. I mean there's no way that pin's going to just slide out if the valve cover is in there kind of retaining it. So I'm going to take this one off, find my tapered end, make sure that goes up, see if this end down here This goes into the cup. And reinstall our pin. Alright. So this engine is ready to have the timing set. But before I do that, going to reinstall my back plate.